Hello everyone, welcome to Beaver's Hobby Channel. Today I'm gonna tune my mini Z all-wheel drive drift car. Let's pick up where we left off last time, where I tested the car after installing the front one way and rear solid axle. And it was a great success. However, I still have to pull the brake rather aggressively to get it to turn in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to tune the springs. Here are the front springs and here are the rear springs out of the box. The setup that it has is front hard springs and rear soft springs which will make it understeer. However, for drifting we want oversteer so I'm gonna put the soft springs at the front and hard springs at the back. Let's get to it. The front is pretty easy. You don't really have to pull anything out. You can just use a tweezer put it in and compress the spring like this and then pull it out just like this again put the tweezer in compress the spring and pull it out very easy in this we're gonna have five settings from yellow which is hard to the red which is soft well let's uh, put the purple in first because uh, i'm not sure if the softest is going to be the best let's go with the purple and then tune it from there let's go with the purple and then tune it from there. So let's see how much softer than the original one. It is quite all right. Again, okay, it is much, much harder. It's much stiffer than the purple one. So again. Okay. Putting it in is a reverse from the pulling it out. Oh, by the way, before putting the springs back in, you should check that the suspension is moving freely. Otherwise, you might have to clean the plastic inside this barrel by pulling it out, uh, pull the pin out, and then you're gonna have to use a two millimeter drill bit to drill inside this hole and make it smooth. And that's what we want. Put it in at an angle first. twist it and then pull the tweezer out just like that compress the spring put it in at an angle just like that and well it feels a little bit softer but not by much hmm, it doesn't feel as soft as i would have wanted but anyway let's see how it drives later as for the back uh unfortunately we have to take the top cover off flip screwdriver number zero this one up and slowly pull this out it'll be much easier if you have a car stand but if you don't You can take this uh, tray 
put it under the car and that's it now we have a car stand at the back we're gonna replace the soft springs with the hard one we have the red which is soft green normal and yellow for hard springs so I'm gonna put the yellow springs in oh. these are much much stiffer than the original springs give the original spring somewhere so we don't lose them and oh this is this these oh these are much much stiffer than the original springs in put the cover back in and because the plastic of mini Z is quite brittle uh, and here's my trick to put everything back into the original thread so uh, turn it counterclockwise first until you can feel the click that means the screw is going back into its old um, screw thread and then now we can screw it in again counterclockwise until you hear a click and it is going to go in smoothly and you don't force it in, just uh, put the screws in wrist tight is uh, what we call it once you feel that it is tight, you stop, just like that and it is done, now we have new springs we can see that the front is pretty bumpy right now and the rear is very stiff I ended up going with front red which is the softest and rear yellow which is the hardest and this setup allows me to turn in a little bit easier but the front still doesn't bite as hard as I would have wanted so the next thing I'm gonna tune is the front toe angle from this kit the MDW203 the minus is going to have the toe arm effect which is what I need from this table it is going to say that it will have less stability and that's exactly what I want I want it to be able to turn in easily and aggressively so the rear can swing out easier we're gonna need to cut the tie from the rear
know, after you cut it out, you have to clean it nicely. To change the tie rod, it is pretty easy. We just remove the bottom cover. So the screws are all the same size, and that's easy to remember. Okay, so lift that one up, and that's it. So the rod that I'm going to put in is going to be slightly shorter than the original. And the original is on the right, and the new one, which will result in toe out, is on the left. So when you put in, you have to put these two prongs on the servo shaft, like that, and then the steering knuckle over that and the other side as well and that's it now we can put the cover back on And don't put it in too tight, otherwise it won't be able to turn. So you have to feel that it is smooth. If it's stuck, you'll have to loosen the screws a little bit. Now let's check if it is working. Welcome to Noble. It should be able to turn easily and smoothly. And that's the success. You can see that now I have front toe out, which is perfect for drifting. So far, the setup is front one way and rear solid axle, front soft springs, rear hard springs, and front toe out. With the front toe out, it can turn in much easier. However, now it is pretty nervous to drive. So next, let's do the camber. 
the documentation set. One degree to four degree camber. The more camber it has, the more stability it has. Well, the camber is the angle which the wheel will sit. So, when it is uh, the original, I believe it is zero camber. So, the wheel sits at a right angle, so it's 90 degree to the floor, to the road. But with more camber, it is going to lean in like that. So, when the car is leaning to one side, it is going to have more grip and by turn more stability so the camber that i'm gonna use is the two degree camber which is on this rail again i'm gonna have to cut them out so to change the camber we're gonna have to take a lot of things out starting with the suspension clips and that that too and then pull that out Next, we're gonna have to pull this out and remember from which side it is from. Anyway, it is going to be pretty easily to identify because it is unique to one side. And that's it, that is out. Next, we're gonna have to remove the wheel. And then the bearings. There are two in each knuckle. You can take a tweezer and push them out one at a time. To see which camber it is, we're gonna see the. You're gonna see a number. There we go. And here's the camber number, the number two that I'm gonna use, and the standard one doesn't have any number. Let's put the bearings in. And then the wheel, and then the wheel, the swing shaft first and then the wheel and wheel nut okay if it is too tight back it up back it off a little bit perfect and let's do the other side That's number two. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to put in. Perfect. It might be easier to put the top arm in before putting the knuckle in. And once that's in, next is the shaft. It is still smooth. Perfect. So next the clips. Uh, 
and the springs I put this one in last because it is easier to do it this way and that's it now i think now we have both camber and toe Two is a little bit hard to turn in, so let's try one. That's it for today. I really like how it drives right now. So I think I'll keep it this way or maybe I'll tune it a little bit more with the tires. As always, thanks for watching and see you again next time.